Hello, my name is Sirwan Kajo with Voice of America's Extremism Watch Desk. Our guest today is Colonel Wayne Marato, the official military spokesman for the Global Coalition Against ISIS. Colonel, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. First, let's start uh, with the Iraq. In recent week, the Islamic State terror group has stepped up its attacks against Iraqi and Kurdish Peshmerga forces in uh, the northern part of the country. To what do you attribute this uh, increase in uh, violence by ISIS? And in what capacity is the coalition supporting its uh, local partners in Iraq? Well, let me start off with this, that the coalition is in Iraq at the invitation of the Iraqi government and we respect the sovereignty of Iraq. So our mission in Iraq is to defeat Daesh and Daesh remnants and set conditions for stability and security follow on missions. Now, Daesh is territorially defeated. At one point, they had 110,000 square kilometers of territory they claimed in their so-called caliphate. They ruled over 8 million people. They called Mosul the capital of their so-called caliphate. Today, it appears their so-called caliphate is in the uh, tunnels and caves of the Makmur Mountains and some deserts in Iraq and Syria. Now, they are territorially defeated, but Daesh is resilient and they're tough. They're not going to give up. And the coalition is going to continue to pursue them with a lot of pressure until all the Daesh remnants are defeated. So. There is a bit of misconception about the attacks, an increase in attacks. I believe from this year to last year, attacks are actually lower this year than last year. There's also a misconception about uh, Daesh attacking U.S. convoys and Daesh attacking U.S. facilities in Iraq. First of all, there are no U.S. facilities in Iraq. They're all Iraqi facilities that the coalition it, are guests at. Now, the convoys, there are no US convoys, there's no coalition convoys. These convoys are Iraqi civilian contracted logistic convoys. They carry equipment for the ISF. And out of all of the convoys, approximately 5% are hit by IEDs or attacked. Most of those 5% are, continue on with their mission. There's minimal damage. And the ISF protects those convoys. So you have Iraqi civilians driving these 18-wheelers just trying to make a living. And they're being attacked by either Daesh or these outlaw militia groups or just outlaw gangs trying to hurt the coalition. But in actuality, they're hurting the Iraqis because that equipment is for the ISF. And the U.S., through the CTEF program has granted this equipment to the ISF. And the ISF is doing a tremendous job fighting Daesh. The coalition, the US, we're not, we're not in the lead fighting Daesh, it's the ISF. And when I first came to Iraq for OIR in 2015, uh, we were at the level of uh, being at Iraqi facilities such as Taji, and uh, Basmaya, we were training the Iraqis in, in, in low-level tactics how to clear a room, how to shoot and maneuver. The coalition no longer does that. The Iraqis are training themselves. The coalition part of uh, OIR, the U.S. portion of that, has drawn down from some over 5,000 a year ago to approximately 2,500 now. And that's a good news story. That's a, the success of the ISF. They've done a lot of battling with, with Daesh, and they've been successful. Now, the future is not bloodless in Iraq and Syria. It's, it's going to be a fight against Daesh remnants, but the ISF, the SDF, and the Peshmerga are going to continue to pursue Daesh, and the coalition is going to support them. So we've gone from being at Besmaya and Taji training the Iraqis. They're training themselves now. Now we are enabling and supporting 
the ISF and the SDF and the Peshmerga with things such as intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, logistics, and air power when they request it. So we, we partner with them, and it's always been the goal of the coalition to build that partner capacity so that the ISF can take on Daesh itself and protect its border and its sovereignty. And we think we've made tremendous progress in that mission because the ISF is in the lead and the ISF is doing the fighting. The coalition is supporting them and our mission continues to support them with what we give them, enabling them uh, in the mission to, to defeat Daesh and Daesh remnants. But officials in Baghdad and Erbil, um, the capital of the Kurdistan region, say that ISIS remains a major, major threat in, in the country. Like you said, while it no longer holds any territory, it is still capable of conducting these types of deadly attacks. In light of these violent attacks, should, the, uh, should we expect changes in the way the US-led coalition assists, assists in um, countering ISIS' growing insurgency? Well, well let me tell you this. Uh, OIR does not see or observe any indication of resurgency. Daesh is not going to take over Mosul and make it their so-called caliphate capital. What Daesh is doing and what Daesh continues to do is pursue an insurgency with hit and run tactics, assassinations, kidnappings, and criminal activities to fund their terrorism. And they seek to undermine the progress of liberated areas towards stabilization. Um, Daesh capabilities in finance and in, in, uh, military and their propaganda have all been diminished. And the coalition and our partner forces will maintain that pressure on Daesh and prevent a reemergence of Daesh. So again, the, the future is not bloodless in Iraq and Syria with Daesh. Uh, we have to keep on putting the pressure on them and, and keep on defeating them. And the ISF and the SDF and the Peshmerga have been successful. Now, let's, well, well, in addition to threats posed by ISIS, Iraqi military bases uh, housing U.S. troops, <clears throat> and Erbil International Airport, which also hosts a, a coalition base, have come under several rocket and drone attacks in recent weeks and months. What group or groups are responsible for these attacks? And what can the coalition do to put an end to these attacks? Well, the coalition has a right to self-defense and we will defend ourselves. Now, which groups are, are, are responsible for this? I don't know. The Kurdistan regional government and the government of Iraq are in charge of those investigations. And we're waiting for them to tell us who is, in, who is in, uh, at, at fault for these uh, attacks. So I don't want to get ahead of the GOI or the KRG. Uh, I'll refer you to them and, and see how they're, they're coming along with their investigation on these attacks. But I will say this that each attack against the GOI, the KRG, and the coalition undermines the authority of Iraqi institutions, the rule of law, and Iraqi national sovereignty. Now let's uh, turn to Syria, where ISIS similarly has been carrying out attacks against civilians, as well as your partners, the Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF. Can you explain to our viewers the latest SDF-led campaign against active ISIS cells in eastern Syria and the type of support the coalition provides in this regard? Well, the SDF have been a great partner with the coalition and, and we provide them the same type of uh, support that we give to the ISF and the Peshmerga. So we give them intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, logistics, and air power when requested. So they've been very good and that, that little portion up there in the Asa, in that northeast Syria, uh, it, it's not perfect, but it, it's coming along. There are some stability and security there, and the SDF has done a really good job, and, and we're supporting them there. So I think there, there's some hope there, and it's getting better in that area. But we'll continue to go after Daesh and any kind of Daesh remnants. And we have security patrols uh, almost on a daily basis in that area showing the population that the coalition is there and, and we're supporting the SDF. And the SDF has taken the fight to Daesh and, and we'll continue to support them. A whole camp where uh, 
about 60,000 people live has witnessed a growing <laughs> violence since the beginning of this year more than 70 people have been killed inside the camp as a result of that violence now is this in any way related to isis growing activity outside the camp as your sdf uh, partners have been saying well look, first let me say this that the coalition does not run the idp camps or the detention facilities in northeast syria they're run by the sdf now running detention facilities and idp camps are beyond the scope of oir Again, OIR's mission is to defeat Daesh and Daesh remnants, and it's beyond the scope of the SDF. The coalition supports NGOs and the international community coming in and assisting. And what the coalition is doing, along with the SDF, is providing that time and space and that stability and that security so the NGOs and the international community can come in and help. I do want to congratulate the SDF because back in april they had a successful operation in the Al-Hal idp camp to enhance uh, security and safety for all the residents and the ngos while degrading and disrupting uh, dash activities so uh, i believe in march alone there were some um you know 15 murders in march and, and that has stopped because the sdf with the support of the coalition right we provided support but they, the SDF led the operation, so things are going to get better in, in that camp. And we understand it, it's a, it's an, it's a like an, a, a factory for uh, indoctrination for these young kids in there from these Dash uh, widows. But again, that is beyond the scope of OIR's mission and the SDF. We're going to provide that uh, time and space and that stability and that security for hopefully. NGOs, the international community come in and, and assist in that, that a problem in the IDP camps and the detention facilities. What is the coalition's position on the uh, repatriation uh, of families of ISIS foreign fighters? While several countries have taken back some of their citizens uh, held in Al Hol and other detention camps in Northeast Syria, most countries haven't done so. Well, again, we're going to support what the international community wants and, and comes to agreement on that. So uh, that's still an issue that hasn't been solved yet and there's still talks going on. So we'll see how it comes out in the long run with those uh, with those talks with the international community about repatriation. As you know, Russia has been expanding its military presence in Northeast Syria. Do you see this as a threat to your ongoing anti-ISIS efforts in the country? Because Russia openly opposes your um, presence in uh, in that part of Syria. Well, I'll say this, the, the coalition maintains direct communication with the Russian military to facilitate air and ground deconfliction. And Russia and the coalition forces have a mutually respectable understanding. So we continue to deconflict with them in the region to make sure that our relationship remains intact. Now, uh, my last question is about um, the fate of uh ISIS foreign fighters held by the SDF. How do how do you see um, the future of these uh, of these dangerous individuals held in a very volatile part of Syria? Uh, you know, I, I can't predict the future. I, I can say this though that the SDF is running those detention facilities and those IDP camps. Uh, the coalition is not involved in that. We support the SDF and. Uh, we're providing that time and space so the NGOs and the international community come in and help out. So again, it, it goes back to the international community helping with those detention facilities and those DASH fighters so they don't get out and return to the battlefield. So those kids in the IDP camp who are indoctrinated with this poisonous ideology don't go to the battlefield. That's why we need the international community and NGOs to help out and assist in this because, again, it's beyond the scope of the OR mission. Again, our mission is to defeat Daesh and Daesh remnants, and, and we're continuing to do that at the invitation of the Iraqi government. 
Just to follow up on that, the autonomous administration in North and East Syria has been calling on the establishment of a local tribunal to try these ISIS fighters. In the absence of an international, uh, any international effort to uh, repatriate the, these people to their original countries, would the coalition support that type of initiative? Well, would I have to have more information on that before we, we would commit to it? All right, Colonel, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks.